So I've copied this over eight times. Um, so now we want to actually also hook up our timer. So I'm gonna quickly uh, remove some of the uh, unnecessary junk. And we're going to be running these together. And I'm, going, I'm just going to be using a caution block, maybe even two, because we're cautious. Uh -huh. So if I if I accidentally break this one, it won't uh, screw things up. Um, and what we need to build now is we need to build some logic that will be uh, reading this uh, this timer, which we actually need to turn on continuously. So let's just quickly fix that by building extra gate. So now this time is running properly, we can use it. Um, so that will be reading the current output of this timer, checking if it's actually the uh, if that if it's actually the correct address, and if it is the correct address, we need to uh, read or write something depending on what the user of this thing wants. So first of all, how do you even detect that the correct address is being used? Well, this here is again one of the reasons that the extra gate is underrated because it turns out that it's quite handy in this case. So let's look at the logic diagram of an extra gate or an extra nor gate action disk. Wait, so in the new update, they remove the logic diagrams. Oh no, I need to make a new one now. I'll have to now I have to do have an effort to demonstrate this. Actually literally removed content from the game. Why? Well, anyways, so um we have an X nor gate over here. And uh, this is just for one bit of the counter. So we have an, uh, our counter here. Let's just visualize that by placing some more gates there. <laughs> so, so we have our counter there on the desired input we have over here, which we're going to visualize by having a finger, hand, thing. Right? So basically, what this does is it only turns on if these things are equal. So only if the if what the timer says is equal to what the user says, it turns on. If the timer is something else, it will turn off. Unless, of course, the user switches it, and then it's turned on again. So what you can do is you can simply do this for all the bits, and then put all of that through an AND gate. And uh, this AND gate, it's going to give a pulse every single time that the correct address is coming out of the counter. On this AND gate, it's going to be making sure that it's, it's going to be basically giving a signal to the entire rest of the uh, timer memory module that, hey, we are now actually looking at the correct address. So we need to like read or write or something. Um, so basically, <laughs> What you need to do is you need to change all of these to be extra gates. Place down some switches. And then wire everything up. Uh, and we also need to wire this up to the output, which are the timers. And last but not least, we are going to be uh, having an AND gate over here. I'm just going to paint it white because it's important. And it's basically just going to get an input from all these uh, XNOR gates we placed. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So every now and then, which means that every single time that the uh, selected address is select is uh, coming out of the timer, which is address zero in this case, it's going to quickly give a pulse. Um, but now what we need to do is need to make sure that each time this thing gives a pulse, 
Um, and the user is saying that we need to write something to the tire memory. We need to actually write something to the tire memory. So again, we'll be having some inputs. These input switches. And we're going to be connecting them to the uh, to the inputs of this uh, circuit. Again, if you want to actually build a uh, logic circuit around this, you replace the switches with whatever logic gates you want to connect everything to. What you also need to do is you need to, you see, if, you'd cons if you'd we continuously be writing the input, uh, at some point the input might be wrong. Um, or it might be back to zero because we are no longer giving the data properly. So we need to uh, add a quick module that will make sure that we only write the output once. And it basically needs to be just some memory that's just going to keep track if um, if we want to uh, if we are actually requesting our writes to happen right now. So there's some uh, memory again. I'm going to use extra memory. Use whatever you want. It's your time memory module. But there might, be, there might be side effects, so you might also want to not do that. So we so we have our extra memory here, right? EXOR memory. The better kind of memory. And we have our... We basically want to... to if we press a button, we want this to turn on. Um, but if we press the button again, we, we don't want it to turn on again, of course. So what we do is we... Get the inverted, and then an AND gate, and then have the button. Actually, I'm going to put the button on top of the AND gate because I can. So out from the extra memory into this AND gate, and then back into the extra memory. And again, it's extra memory, so you need to connect it to all the three uh, things. So each time you press this, it's, it's only going to turn on. But it will only have, the press will only have an effect if, I actually, if it's actually uh, turned off at that moment. So by pressing that button, you can only turn it on. Next, what we need to do is we need to check is this memory turned on? Um, and is the uh, is the is you know the the correct address selected? In which case. Uh, we want to actually uh, uh, write stuff to memory um, and also turn this off. Um, and we can't actually uh, connect directly. Actually, these connections are necessary. We, uh, we, we can't just connect it back here um, because then we have a two directional connection, which you can't do unless you are one of these blueprint editing unholy persons. So we're just going to go through another gate like that. So now I'm going to be using the spot gun to simulate the one tick pulses correctly. Each time we request it to be turned on, it will turn on. And each time we uh, say that it's selected at the, cor at the correct address and the, a write is being requested, we turn it off until it comes to pulse through this gate. And we want to come uh, pulses if the s s correct address is selected again and again. Because remember, that's on the counter, so that will happen all the time. So now I just need to build a version of that over here. So again, we're going to start that with the extra memory. And then we're going to be having uh, the aunt on the not or gate. So basically, if we haven't requested anything already. Then we want to turn this on. Uh, let's just quickly reset that. Um, oh yes, we do also want to put a button on here directly because otherwise the AND gate will turn on whenever it feels like it. Good. Um, so this now works, right? Yes, it does. I just missed a bunch of times, I think. Let me just quickly check that it actually works. Yeah, I just missed. Good. I literally missed from like half a meter distance. 
<laughs> nice. Um, and then we also need an extra gate for timing. So if this gate turns on, then we need to, you know, uh, then we are no longer uh, requesting an input. I hope that didn't f the timer too much. Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> um, so, uh, so if that gate fires, we are of course no longer requesting an input. Oh yes, I wasn't done yet. So now it's good. So if we would request an input, and I want to do something at address zero, so when it reaches address zero, it's gonna fire that gate and reset the memory. Um, so now in order to write something, we need to uh, first give a pulse to this upper gate. So I'm just gonna connect this to all the upper gates. And then one tick later, which we can just quickly, again, use this second gate for, which we use for delay anyway, we need to uh, set, give a pulse to the lower gate. So theoretically, if I would want to uh, write something to address zero, and I want to write like the uh, like the, the first four bits. I want that to turn on. Uh oh. Um, oh yes, of course we forgot a bunch of things. So first of all, we need to actually set this timer to the correct length. Um, uh, okay, now I need to set everything to do the fifty-three ticks. Yes, yeah, so remember that thing from future and past version of Codemaker 4? Well, I forgot to actually do this, which uh, explains a lot. Um, so we needed to set it to 253 ticks for every single one, because you need to actually do this before copying everything over. Okay, so now that that's all done, we might have more success. Why is it giving pulses when it shouldn't? Oh, um, also we need to actually, of course, <laughs> hook the memory up to that AND gate. So let's quickly, so now that we've fixed everything, let's reset it. Attempt to write like this or something. Don't write anything. So didn't write anything, which is good. Now I'm gonna request a write. And it only writes it once. And say that we now want to like store zero in that same place. So let's just quickly check that it's not going to write without my consent. Yeah, it just keeps the data, but I want to actually write something there. So now next time that it comes through, it will be set to zeros again. Good. And I can set a one to address zero. And I set the first bit on on address zero. Good. Then I'm going to turn on the second bit on address one. Good. Can turn on the third bit and address uh, two. Actually, notice that <laughs> I forgot to actually switch address as well. So, address zero is going to have the first bit turned on. Then, address one will have the second bit turned on. Then, address uh, two will have the third bit turned on. I just missed it. So, now I need to wait again for the timer to roll around. Right, and if we're now to go to address zero and actually no, like address one and turn off everything, then that middle, then there's no more bytes where the middle thing is turned on. So that timer would should like no longer display anything. So yes, yeah, so this is properly working. Um, 
So that's how tire memory works. I'm Codemaker4. You were you. Oh, actually, uh, no, I forgot. Um...